Hello and welcome to another short video interview, this time with Jilly Coston, who is Senior Vice President for EMEA at CORE. Jilly, welcome today. Well, Jeremy, it's great to be here as well. Great to see you again. It's good to have you. I wanted to um, talk to you today about the value of IoT enabled asset monitoring. We hear an awful lot about the role of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. I just want to understand a bit better um, why should an IoT enabled business be thinking right now about artificial intelligence and machine learning? It's, it's a really interesting area, isn't it? And um, it has a lot of uh, great opportunity in it. Trying to make sense of how it fits with IoT, I imagine, can be a challenge for customers. But actually, um, we see it really being able to, on one side, you have the Internet of Things, and on the other side, you have artificial intelligence or machine learning. And, you know, really, um, I think businesses can be looking at it as a partnership between the two. Um, with, uh, with IoT, you have the ability to take uh, remote devices and, uh, and enable uh, the communications layer and get the information, get data, which turns into information, and you can do some things with it and it describes what's being done, and you can turn it into information or services. Um, with artificial intelligence, it goes on to the next layer of being able to predict and so, really, the two things coming together enable it to uh, really, you know, move from the pilot phase or early phase of development into the real rollout. And we're already seeing sort of IoT has more um, deployments of over one million devices than ever before in, in our history, and, and that's set to proliferate. So, customers and, and companies that are looking to develop IoT can look to artificial intelligence to gain more beyond just the data or the information for services and take that far beyond into uh, intelligence and from that intelligence really into usable data, what you do with it, what should we do with it next? Uh, yeah, undoubtedly. So putting our, our practical hats on, I mean, what are some of the best applications that you've seen at CORE? in IoT's enablement of AI and machine learning? Well, I mean, the obvious ones from a market perspective that, that we've seen are, are really, you know, the things like Nest and um, Tesla, you know, and, and in the Nest environment, um, that's pretty similar to what our customers can look to do. So in the Nest environment, you're, you're taking temperature, and you, it's learning the behavior, the patterns of the individual. Um, so I think it's much more about the machine learning and the artificial intelligence piece. It, it, it comes later because you're really, you're really um, removing the human part of it when it comes to repeat, uh, reusing the artificial intelligence. But when the machine is learning, it's taking that information and turning it into intelligence in a way that for example, in stolen vehicle recovery services today, vehicles are already talking to each other in a mesh um, to locate uh, for the police force perhaps a stolen vehicle. That's already happening today. So actually to be able to utilize that information and couple it with core enablement services around the usage data, that really enables companies to look at, okay, what can we do next with the data? We know that vehicles are talking, we can tell where they are, and now actually we can take that on to the next level of saying, what, sh what new services can we deliver? How much more quickly can we locate a stolen vehicle? And perhaps also in the transport sector, again, things like uh, inductive loops from the roads. That requires a lot of manual digging up the road. Um, that's a high cost capex. It's a big infrastructure cost, um, and quite often, you know, those inductive loops when they're faulty, they're faulty for a period of time until someone can get out there. So, actually, being able to look at sensor data, mobile data, lots of different libraries of data in different ways, and bringing that together and looking at that with the usage profiles. Um, 
I want to pause on that just for a second because in the world of machines, uh, back in the old days, we had perhaps data that was a quarter of a meg or one meg of data, and that's you know been quite sustainable for over 10 years. Those types of applications for fleet, etc., we're all using that type of data. Now we're seeing this massive amount of data from many, many more devices. So this entire ability to sort of take that flood of information, and we can either, you know, it can either be like walking through treacle for some customers, but actually what we are aiming to do is with, with machine learning and with bots and with advisory services and usage profile data and all of those types of things, we're actually able to help them, you know, swim through the lakes of data in a very elegant way. To, to something that gets them an end result for a, a business a business benefit. Mm. Well, these are interesting and very relevant applications, connected cars, um, uh, connected health. I can almost hear the executives watching this saying, yeah, but how on earth am I going to find the budget for the necessary skills for a, a bunch of new, highly motivated, highly skilled, highly expensive, uh, software developers to come in and um, I engage us with uh, artificial intelligence. How is this to be done? Yes, Jimmy, that's a really interesting question and an, a very important one for customers and for core. So, yes, of course, they can go out and spend a lot of money on uh, developers, on data scientists, on all sorts of business intelligence groups. Um, that can, you know, get get through all of that data and create new products and services from it. Yes, they can do that. Um, but there's lots of much less expensive ways and probably uh, speedier ways of starting small, um, thinking big, and being able to scale quite quickly. Um, and those examples would be things like, um, you know, if we think about the different levels of data that we would use, that a customer might use. There's the sensor data that they're gathering from their edge devices. Um, there's the metadata that comes from that. And then there's the usage data. And I think if you start at the usage data and you get the right advice, you know, what sort of, what, what sort of device is it? Um, what sort of profile, do, what, are, what are the expectations of how it will be used? Is it actually really behaving in that way in a pilot, in a proof of concept? What have we learned from that? What's the data profile telling us? You know, can we optimize the data? Do we need to do more things? And those types of advisory services are available. They're, they're readily available um, and they're being built on all of the time. So with the right advice from the trusted partners, um, and uh, I think that, that it doesn't have to cost the bank in order to to do it. You, you can get you can get you can get good, usable, actionable data um, and services out the door in a timely way with them um, starting with with some good basic data. That's a relief, and I'm sure uh, particularly so to many of our uh, viewers who will be pleased to hear that there is support out there should they need it. Um, that's really all we have time for today. Um, Jilly, thank you so much for your time and thank you for your frontline insights into uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence in the Internet of Things. Thank you, Jeremy. It's been great to have you. So our thanks to CORE and if you have any further interest in this area, keep an eye on iotnow.com for updates and further videos. We look forward to seeing you again soon.